So in the gangster trilogy of RGV, the first was Satya, second is company and third is D. So in today's my take, I'm going to delve into the details of the company, the second in the gangster trilogy. So we have an exciting discussion lined up with Ramu. Hopefully we'll unearth and bring up facts and trivia about company that you haven't heard so far. So Ramu, I'm a big fan of company. 2002, it, it basically changed the uh, history of Bollywood. It created a new sophistication for organized crime, how it actually works. And it, it created an, a new benchmark on how yeah. gangster movies are made. So comparing Satya and company, Satya was very raw and rustic. Uh, you, you showed sweaty faces. You showed tapori like local gangsters moving yeah. around and shooting with country made guns. And company took it to the next level. There is a level of sophistication. There is a level of polishedness and you bring in corporate governance and show organized crime in a very different lens. So what changed between Satya and company? See, if you take Satya, like I mentioned in our past interview also, it's like a, the basic line water. I, my understanding of the underworld was uh, very, very minimal when uh, I was making Satya. It is some anecdotes I, I heard from somewhere and uh, incident here, a character there, things like that. No, that, uh, but so that was done in 97, 90 release. The escalation of the underworld battles happened after that, actually, mostly. So it was, uh, it was at a fever pitch between 98 and 2000, you know. That is when I actually started understanding how the organizations operate. So right. the dons, there was no dawn in, in Satya. Right. I never really established who's the boss of whom. And it was more like a Goindamde, Bau's character is a political guy. Right. This, this is not underworld gang the way we understand. Like D, D company or Chota Rajan company. That is not the point. Right. No. So uh, the reason I started understanding is one day there, there was a, a producer friend of mine. I was... Um, talking to him and he introduced a gentleman to me and he said that guy knows Daud Ibrahim and Chota Rajan. He, he, he was working with them. He knows them on a first hand level. Okay. So the newspapers were full of stories of the war between the Rajan gang and the Daud gang. You know. So then when I asked him about this, he said a line which basically became company. He said, ke beech pe itna pyar hai. They hate each other because once they loved each other. But even now, if it, it, so many people died, they, they killed on each side. Even now, if Chota Rajan is smoking and Dawood calls, he will throw the cigarette. He's got that respect. Nafrat karte is like pyar karte. I thought that was the one line story of company. You know, so basically, there is a mentor prodigy, which is how exactly what happened between Daud and Chota Rajan. Mm -hmm. And then things didn't work out over the, over the years, and then they split. Right. You know, right. Which created the war. You know? yeah. so, so, emotional betrayal mm -hmm. and the hurt being the primary thing rather than revenge is what I think is a novelty of a company. Absolutely. Yeah. So, in Satya, we get to see the politician and the gangster nexus. You know, Bau using Guru Narayan yeah. and Bikumatre to interplay his Correct. own dynamics. So, so very seriously speaking, Satya is not an underworld film, right. actually. Because underworld is very heavily, the dons are the people. And right. the dons don't, are not politicians. Right. They might have a connection, but they are not really the point. Right. Yeah. So the conflict was between politicians and the local mafia or local mm. small time goons uh, in Satya. Versus taking it to the next level and the conflict point between Malik uh, and Chendu uh, was much more intense. Yeah. And I think that created an opportunity to create more drama. Yeah, correct. That's true. Did you actually model Malik's character exactly like Dawood Ibrahim? Was that... I mean, I won't say that, you know, because see, the point is Dawood Ibrahim is a very mysterious figure. So I accept for one or two short videos and all that and... But I know a lot about his thinking process, which I got to know from people who know him on a personal level. But I would say, see, a man who's very emotionless and cold-blooded and only talks logic is the 
is actually my understanding of the character in Malik. You know? So, if Dawud Ibrahim's thoughts kind of became a personality, that is Ajay. But I am not very sure Dawud Ibrahim, the original Dawud Ibrahim will be like that. Right. Yeah. Right. So, coming back, I think this is one of the unique collaborations between Boni Kapoor, Aswini Dutt and you. Uh, how did that transpire? What made you work I mean, with that was uh, not easy because Boni and Ashmi that also know each other. They did something together and they made films with Anil Kapoor and all that. And the fact that Satya was such a big hit and me coming back with another gangster film is what I think since I also know Ashmi that you know, did uh, Govinda Govinda together. It just happened over just a chat. There's no, there's no great uh, this thing on that. Yeah. So, was this like the biggest uh, film under uh, Verma Corporation banner? I won't say that, you know. Because, see, because company is a sound, it sounds big and the subject matter, but it's not a big film. I mean, in terms of, I don't know, you mean the cost or whatever. The cost, uh, production cost. No, no, it's not. Again, coming back to the very beginning, you actually thank and appreciate certain people like uh, Sivanandan, who was the joint commissioner, and then Balkishan from Times of India, and of course, Daya Nayak. So, did you actually end up meeting them one on one and, and captured their? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, I am I'm very close to them. Oh. Close friends of even till today. Daya Nayak. Yeah, we're in touch. In fact, I was talking to Daya Nayak today morning. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, uh, so company is an is a collection and aggregation of all their inputs and yeah. what they. Actually I wouldn't say one or two. Quite a lot. Okay. Uh, it's quite a lot of people are giving me inputs in, in various. It could be from the cops. It could be from the gangsters. It could be from uh, people who friend for the underworld or not really criminals, you know, but they kind of facilitate certain operations and things like that. Yeah. So, uh, you worked with uh, Jaydeep Sarni and Chandan Arora, who were the writers. So, uh, again, Chandan Arora is the editor. Editor, okay. Yeah, Jaydeep okay. is writer, yeah. So, uh, what really goes behind the scenes? So, when you think of a line, so when you wanted to create the conflict uh, story, uh, how did you work with a writer to translate that? See, not so much. I mean, I mean I'm not talking about Jaydeep in particular. Uh, any writer is working with me as a very minimal thing because I'm most more or less I write the entire thing. I write it in English uh, first, you know, and also I write it in shots. I don't write it like a dialogue aspect, you know, because the shots also will be designed for the lines, and so the line is coming either because of what shot will follow. So that kind of a pattern is very difficult for a writer to catch it. Mm. Yeah. And one very unique aspect about company is the way you portrayed women in the nexus and politics. None of your movies have such prominent role of women playing in the nexus or politics or the overall dynamics that were unfolding. For example, uh, I'll call out Manisha Koirala calling Antramali to say, hey, uh, someone is coming to kill you, right? And then Antramali coming to Hong Kong all the way and in a fit of rage, picking the gun and trying to shoot Malik. Never ever in your films you had women take active role in playing these kind of characters. Yeah. So uh, why did you interwave that? See, that is because in the in the world, I, I was telling the story. Of course, there are women. Of course, there are women who are in the situation. You know, if uh, if a person is connected or dating or in a relationship with an underworld guy. So they would take the kind part of it with as much like how we probably uh, like a, uh, a normal housewife would be doing something in going into that ambience. Like so I would I would look at it like that. Handing but, over jewels. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But but do you really think when a gangster flees from the country, will he takes along his girlfriend or his yeah, wife? Of course they do. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> yeah. So this was based on some of the facts in a way. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And coming to cast. Um, Ajay Devgan was just perfect. You know, he is subtle yet intense. Uh, he speaks through his eyes and his dialogues are very minimal. And it, 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 it came across in multiple movies like Booth is another example where he played a mm. very, very powerful role. Yeah. So, uh, was he your first choice when you thought of Malik? Actually, my first choice was Abhishek. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because Abhishek didn't have dates. You know? Uh, because he was busy in three, four films, and even at a point of time, I wanted Shahrukh. Mm. You know, but I met Shahrukh. Shahrukh also was excited, but I just felt you now Shahrukh is a very. Uh, I mean, Shahrukh for Daud. I'm not talking about Vivek. Right. No, for Daud. Right. Uh, Abhishek, I wanted for uh, Vivek. For okay. Yeah. Then uh, I thought Shahrukh is very uh, the the way kind of his energy and uh, the way he. I mean, 
He's very hyper right. in terms of that is what people like about him. I thought to make him completely subtle and just not moving at all, being silent, I thought it did look very odd on screen. <laughs> Which is the reason I didn't pursue. I am hearing Shahrukh. this for the first time. Huh? Shahrukh, Kinstoff, Ajay Devgan. Yeah, I just had one meeting with him and I never pursued him because I felt uh, it is not, uh, I mean, his body language itself is wrong for that part. You know, his natural body language. Right. And sh see, there is an actor, there is a performer. Shahrukh is a performer. Right. Because he is hyperactive is what which endears the audience to him. So this uh, lazy guy sitting with the back, which which is Ajay's natural body language, is that. <laughs> right? So then I thought Ajay is more perfect for the role, and yeah, that's how it happened. No, he fit like a T. He was just perfect yeah. in that. So did someone recommend, or you you just thought he would? No, I just thought of Ajay, and I went to meet him. Yeah. And uh, coming to the role of Chendu, uh, was Vivek Obroy your first choice? I, I heard a lot of stories and I read I that. Told, like, I told like, first it was Abhishek. Right, yeah. right. Then when the dates were not there and then when I, uh, so I was making a film called Pyar Tune Kya Kya at that time. Mm -hmm. So Suresh Obroy was there. So one day he came and showed me the pictures of Vivek. I instinctively felt he's right for the choice. <laughs> yeah. I read that he actually spent some time in slums and... Uh, Inherited. And I don't know about that. As an actor, <laughs> if you prepare like that, I am not aware of it. But he was stand, you know, he had very rough look. He in fact folded his sleeves and put beads. Yeah, he and... came with that look to meet me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I thought he was just perfect. So what do you think of the chemistry between Ajay and Vivek? Uh, mm. Did you get exactly what you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, uh, see, it easily, like uh, Ajay is a thinker in Malik's role, and this guy is very emotional and. Uh, he doesn't think before he says something and you can see there's all the time hassled about something. Right. So I think that difference is definitely there between Daudi Brahman and Jota Raya. Right, yeah. right. And then you you picked up Vivek Obroy for Rakta Charitra. Yes, yes, a, yes, yes. Yeah. Perfect. So coming to Manisha Koirala, you work with her only on two occasions. One is company, the other one is uh, booth two. Yeah. So uh, what was the uh, reason behind picking up Manisha Koirala for that? I mean, I thought, I mean, the our natural body language, because I know Manisha, we keep meeting each other and uh, I just felt she was perfect for that role, yeah. But she was, she had this tomboyish look with uh, a, a cigarette in hand all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that also picked up from some known person who was uh, with Daud at that time. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. And uh, Antra Mali, and again, she worked with you on multiple movies. Yes, Prem yes, Kada yes, is yeah. one of my personal favorites. Yeah. So, uh, Antra Mali was very good in a D-glam role. And was that her first movie? Her first film was Prem Kada. Oh, Prem Kada. Then yeah, yeah, Madhuri yeah. Vishit Banna Chaatam. Correct. And then, correct. Yeah. Okay. My Madhuri Vishit much later. Okay. After that, it was Must. Must. Right, right. So, uh, and Seema Biswas. Uh, this again goes back to your admiration for the Bandit Queen. Yeah. So. You can say that. Yeah. Was she the first choice? When yeah, Seema Biswas was. Okay, yeah. but wasn't Seema Biswas a bit young to play the mother role for? <laughs> Not really. Was she? Because Vivek also was, I think, was 21, and I don't know how much exactly Seema was at that time, but I didn't feel so. Yeah, and Mohan Lal was again very, very good, very apt for that uh, South Indian Joint Commissioner role. Yeah. Was he modeled around uh, Sivanandam? Sivanandam. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so, how did you approach uh, Mohan Lal? What was the conversation that you had? See, very initially, I, I actually wanted to approach Kamal for that. Oh. I met him also, wow. you know. But there also, I felt the same. What I had the problem with uh, Shahrukh, you know, <laughs> in terms of their natural stardom, the way they they do. I feel uh, in a realistic film, it'll just take a little off. It'll look off the thing. Guys, you so heard it because, here the first time. Yeah, Kamal in stock Mohan Lal in company. I never heard about yeah, it. I never read about yeah. it. So because of that, and I changed my mind, and then I approached uh, Mohan Lal. Fantastic, and uh, Akash Kurana, he was fantastic, and uh, he actually brought a level of sophistication. Yeah, uh, and and you can compare that to the role of. Uh, uh, the the elderly guy in Gayam, you know, who actually supports uh, Jagat Babu. So, <coughs> yeah. uh, what was the rationale behind placing a senior role, a senior person behind someone like Malik? No, I wanted someone. See, he was my in my mind uh, like a Tom Hagen kind of a guy, in okay. Godfather, like a slightly elderly guy, and he's a, he's a kind of a consultant and advisors and uh, things like that. 
and uh, and Akash is a very good actor. I worked with him in Rath before. Right. So that's right. where the connection. He played Revati's father. Yes, yes. Perfect. And two more characters and two more actors that actually rose to the next level. One is uh, Rajpal Yadav, uh, who became a very established comedian, yeah. and then uh, Vijay Raz. Yeah. Right. So both of them were uh, very established, of course, at a later point. So what? 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 Because you... both of them I know in Jungle. Okay. Yeah. Jungle came in '99, I think. You know. So I was uh, very impressed with both of them. And Joe Vijayaraj has a very small role. He's got a very strong face. Right. I mean, even if it's one shot, it'll work. And same thing goes with Rajpal. I thought Rajpal, though he's a as a image of a comedian in the ambience of. Uh, Company, you look mm. very different, is what I felt. Right. And my all time greatest performance in company is when Malik is shot the way right. he shouts. Right. That I think, uh, because people don't realize the character working is different, but between action and cut, an actor getting an expression mm. and drawing an emotion from inside on cue, which is what the true test of an actor. To that extent, I believe Rajpal, uh, uh, I mean, was extraordinary in front. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, talking about the scenes, a uh, company opens with these eagles on the skyline yeah. of Mumbai with uh, voiceover. Yeah. Uh, so, you, you briefly mentioned about the inspiration from Mechanist Gold. Yeah, yeah. Can you elaborate more so, on that? So, see, basically, uh, I told my DOP to take some general shots of Mumbai, whatever catches his interest, just to uh, put them in between scenes and places and all that. Then when I was watching the rushes, I was apt to see these eagles flying over. I never saw a sight like that. Eagles hovering over Mumbai. Right. You know, I wanted to start the film with that. You know, that is when I remembered Mekana's gold. Mm. So I had, and then I did that. And then I had this uh, voiceover of Makran Desh Pandey, mm. in which uh, it says, and they keep waiting patiently for months. So my assistant said, Sir, but the eagles don't do that. What do you mean they wait patiently for months? That's all. <laughs> then what I did, I just kind of made one small adjustment. Chilo ke baare mein baut kam log jante. Ki us mein baut sabar hota hai, sir. So I told my assistant, now the average guy sitting in the theater will never know whether the eagles do that or not. Let us say they know. Then both Kamlok Jante means both Kamlok is a point of ex expertise. <laughs> so minimum right. means they'll want to go and check it. Right, you're applying uh, a filter yeah, there. Yeah, you know. And by the time they would have already seen the film and they would have made the impression good or bad or whatever they thought of the film. So then if they feel that this is wrong thing, why would the eagles have patience and uh, wait for months? Right. Then they would understand it as a, just a kind of a... Uh, it's subtext. It's not. You don't take. It's a metaphor. It is not to be taken seriously. You know. Right. Yeah. But my real intention was to have a mechanized gold kind of opening. <laughs> and throughout the movie, you have uh, Makran Deshpande's voiceover as an Archduke reporter. Yeah. So, um, did you think? You see, I was a great uh, fan of voiceovers all all my life. You know, right from Mechanized Gold to Conan the Barbarian to Goodfellas. You know. And Sakya also, I not you didn't use that much, but right. uh, uh, Kandilkar's voice I used. But company, I thought it was necessary because one needs to tell different people's point of views and the overall thing. Right. Like I, I'm one of my favorite lines of Makran is when Molal says, you "No, know, he says this is what the idea." Lekin Sinwasan ki ye soch galati. It is like a god yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Hey, this guy is wrong. <laughs> so suddenly that character looks vulnerable because right. already the voiceover told me more right. than what the characters know. Right. I think that strangeness has really worked. Right. Yeah. And it comes very regularly throughout the movie, you know, with an yeah. Ajitak reporter person. Yeah, I won't say reporter because reporters don't talk so slow <laughs> and uh, that. And right. I won't say that. I think it's like... Uh, some guy belonged to the underworld is telling the story of Mandi No, Chandra. but he concludes saying, I am so and so reporting for Raj Tak. No, 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 no. That, that is a different thing. You are no, Makran doesn't say that. Oh, okay, okay. No. Okay, so talking about the scenes, I think the other one that's very well executed is the confrontation between uh, Malik and uh, Chandu. You know, when uh, they, they are about to split and when he's leaving, he says, you know, if you... If you don't need me, I don't need you. Yeah, I can work without you. Two cash holders, they complete their business. Chal sakte. 
then he says wait agar company may be na chal sakta to mai bhi company ko chal sakta absolutely yeah that's that's the basic point exactly yeah. so um, if you recall what actually went into that scene and how did they improvise yeah. see for me the whole point is if you forget the underworld for once and it is just a company like any company where this business here is crank uh, for a want of a better word so firing happens so i, I at that time i also mentioned this in a regular company you fire people and in underworld company you fire upon people that's about the only difference <laughs> literally yeah literally you literally fire people you know so i think it's a hierarchy it is a jealousy it is the way of the operations the way they work and uh, all that every company there will be differences of opinions in between how to approach a, whatever they have to do so i th- and that that is what we justifies the word company as a title right. also right and and the killing of akash kurana you know that that comes at a point when you are least expecting that you don't know mm. what's coming next uh and it takes time for the audiences to recover from that shock yeah. and the awe factor yeah. so uh, how did you actually plan that you know this guy is trying to uh, make sure that you know th- these guys don't leave each other and he wants to just bring them together he goes and then gets shot without any expectation yeah so i mean i think uh, i mean in the context of the film obviously you see it and when he comes and just by mistake because vivek has been in that mind state of right. whatever he heard he's in a fight he or flight thought this guy is not coming he is actually coming to kill me right. so it's a defensive thing he actually shot yeah and uh, the other question that i have is why didn't you choose dubai and bangkok where the actual events took place and why did you shift the scene to hong kong and uh, kenya see in kenya actually at that time there was always a discussion about who's where there was a confusion you know and they used to operate from all these areas so dubai has become more popular that is abu salam for example used to be in kenya so rajan used to be moving all over the place and all that so hong kong particularly why i would have taken is a uh, uh, i think we're getting a good deal there <laughs> and from a production side <laughs> yeah. okay but it was actually bangkok where chota rajan was uh, attacked right? uh, chota rajan used to move all all over the place so daud used to be more in dubai and karachi and things like that you know but uh, not uh, all of them were uh, they never stayed at one single place uh, permanently but just before company chota rajan was in news for getting assaulted in, yes, in bangkok. bangkok yeah and he was at that time he was there right yeah right now coming back to the chase scene in nairobi i think it was one of the best chase scenes uh, and he becomes actually yeah, uh, yeah. bound and he gets picked up by the police so uh, what went into the making what what kind of camera work did you i copied the scene from a film called i think is amateur i'm not very sure okay yeah. i'll i'll go look it up yeah i'll i'll, I'll figure out I'm, i'm not very sure the title is amateur but uh, is almost a short to short copy of that oh yeah. wow again the first time <laughs> so when you said what went into the making is because i just saw a film and copied it yeah wow uh, i i did a lot of research i've been following everything about company but i'm hearing about this for the first time yeah uh, i think i also said this for the first time <laughs> yeah so it's a crime has been done long time back i thought uh, i will confess it <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other scene that that again startles you is the way the home minister is shot uh with, with full police force in place yeah. and he comes to threaten and uh, uh just meet chendu and he gets shot that was fantastic it actually changes the entire dynamics of the yeah. movie uh and uh, one more thing that i am very curious so there is this attempt to uh, uh eliminate malik in a muhurat shot and there is a bollywood director who announces pyar pyar mm-hmm. and he is so much like karan johar he he his body language his diction he in fact goes on to say uh, it is all about loving your love which was just a dialogue from kabhi khushi kabhi gham so was it a deliberate attempt see i don't think first of all it looks like karan johar but i would like to say that was a deliberate thing on my part not on karan johar but that kind of cinema yeah i would say a lot of those pyar pyar all those titles will be used to be coming during that period of time which was a general comment on of mine on that because and those films used to work a lot right so which means realistically speaking i should have references of those films on you know 
<laughs> but why do you hate uh, the the feel good movies and the i won't say if i they don't interest me why would i hate it i i'm more uh, inclined to be attracted towards the dark side of uh, this thing that's all yeah okay now coming to the bgm and the sound so again sandeep chota did a fantastic job uh, what was your brief and what went into uh, the bgm uh, and the songs of uh, company so i would say pretty much uh, like that in, in fact uh, it, i think that the music of company was more true to it you know rather it's uh, like a small romantic bit between antra and vivek and the, of course the kala song was the biggest hit and the right. title song with urmila right yeah more or less i think there's nothing special but the the flute uh, interlude that comes and goes that and, is sunny yeah. yeah so yeah, i wanted a theme for that right yeah uh, ganda hai par danda hai that was yeah, yeah. very well was written by jadeep yeah right mm. uh, and again was it uh, dwark warrior who did the sound so, designs okay um, and uh, again the editing of company was very crisp uh, it was slightly unlike your previous movies you know where you can clearly see the transition of one scene to other so uh, what was different in chandan arora's work compared to the previous ones see the the basic point is i when i i copied a certain style of editing from this film called requiem for a dream it's mm-hmm. daran araski's film we used lot of this uh, skip frames what we call skip frame editing where because without any change in the perspective and angle when it is cutting and it will keep on jerking like that you know so it is called skip frame editing so i took that and which is what i wanted to adapt it in the beginning when you are narrating and malik just comes and you're introducing the characters and this and the same editing style applied in the khala song right so which we used it as a pattern so it is technically copied from requiem for a dream you know and it is interesting thing about that you know after the film release a week and days later i was in, i was in a gym and uh, one guy walked up to me आपका पिक्चर देखना है सर सो हाउ इज इट पिक्चर अच्छा है लेकिन क्या थिएटर वाले बीच बीच पे काट दे रहे आई सेड एट दैट टाइम दे वर समथिंग दैट दे यूज्ड टू बिलीव दैट ऑपरेटर्स समटाइम्स टेक ऑफ द रील एंड कट द सीन्स सो दैट दे कैन गो होम अर्ली यू नो दैट वाज अ प्रैक्टिस बट दैट डजंट हैपन इन सिटीज यू नो So I was wondering. Then slowly I figured out he's talking about the skip frame editing, right? Because right. he didn't see something like that before. So he thought there was some problem with the projector or the theater. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. much for innovativeness. Yeah. So so company actually um, forced a lot of other things. I heard that the distributors in North India didn't like the posters. They are too classy. Yeah. So they changed that to more romantic. Yeah. Ajay, they put Ajay Devgan's other pictures from other <laughs> films where he's holding a gun and shouting and all that, and then yeah, all kinds of things. Yeah, but I guess that's a uh, I mean requirement of from their side. Yeah. So, um, did you actually plan for the trilogy, uh, Satya Company and D, no, or no, no. It, you yeah, never planned yeah, for it? So it, it just happened based on the changing yeah. dynamics Actually, of the underworld. Actually, for nineties eight or something Satya release. You know, I think I started mid 2000 company, mid 2000, late 2000, because we were in Hong Kong when the 9/11 attacks happened. Right. Yeah. And then D happened in 2005, if I'm yeah. not wrong. So, if you were to make company all over again today, uh, who would be your Malik, Chendu, and Srinivasan? I mean, I, uh, I don't can't imagine. You, uh, I mean, anybody else except them. <laughs> because i've seen them so many times and lived with those characters in my mind for such a long time yeah but uh, there is company starts with malik as an established don and chendu uh-huh. joining his forces uh, don't you think there is an opportunity to tell the back story of malik how he actually rose to that level what happened in the bailes yeah, yes, of course yes of course because uh, it's a whole point in, in in real life any person who reaches at a certain time there be if he's 40 or 50 there be that many years of story right you have to capture it yeah so do you have plans to make a prequel where you will explore the i mean i'm definitely working on something uh, a kind of a web series which i want to encompass the entire underworld origin from the time on start till it 
more or less got finished uh, by 2010. So on that note, I don't remember the character's name, but there is this elderly man whose spine is broken and he tries to yeah. uh, create the uh, compromise. Was he Karim Lala character by any chance? Yeah. Syed, yeah. Uh, no, not Syed. I don't remember the yes, name. Yes, yes, Karim Lala. Ka okay, yeah. okay. It was based on him. Okay. Now, Karim Lala didn't have a back pain, you know, <laughs> right. but I, I put the back pain because he was a very bad actor. <laughs> So I didn't know what to do with him. So I on the spot improvised that he has a back pain. So every time he forgets the dialogue, he keeps saying that, you know. And uh, even yeah. I feel there is a there is a tremendous opportunity to create the backstory of Kalu Mama. Uh, I mean, technically speaking, I mean, if like I like Godfather, every character you can make a film out of it if you choose to. Yeah. So. Uh, so, do you have plans to make uh, any of the prequel uh, talking about the backstory of Malik or Kalu Mama? Or no, I want to make a general, very huge sp spanned uh, web series of the underworld in which all these characters will come, of course. And with all the directors moving towards this new concept called the universe, where they interweave and interconnect yeah. the characters, you have created such iconic characters that live on forever. Do you have plans to create a U RGV universe? I don't know. I my, my thing will be dark universe, I think <laughs> underbuilding universe. I mean, it won't be in science fiction, it won't be in, uh, yeah. No, uh, as, as a fan of your work, Kalu Mama is the only sole person alive from Satya. Even he doesn't get shot. I think he's still alive. Oh, like that. Okay. okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine in, in this current era, Kalu Mama happens to meet some characters from company and, and they actually form a new company. Yeah, yeah. So you create a universe of characters who survived out of uh, these iconic entities of company Satya and you create a new world. That will be fantastic for know, fans. I, I don't think so. <laughs> see, I'll tell you why. Because see, if you like uh, Mario Puzo did something like this in his book called The Last Dawn, where he uh, brought in the characters of Godfather into another story. Okay. You know? uh, but that didn't work because I think they work in a combination. Hmm. There's a Mule, there is a Kalu Mama, there's a Bhikkhu Matre. All of them together, where what you feel about Kalu Mama will be very different if you see only that character in another. I'm not sure. There's a package. Because I'm not convinced. No. Right. But uh, the to make a film on the underworld, Dao's backstory, that is going to work. Right. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Thank you so much for all the insights on what went into company uh, and for all the movie enthusiasts and movie fans. Satya and company are master classes in filmmaking. If you haven't watched, go ahead, watch them. They are on YouTube, they are on OTT. And uh, here we are uh, understanding the insights of what went into behind the scenes of Satya and company. Thanks for watching.